This is Jim Lakely, Vice President of the Heartland Institute with a climate realism fact check. Actually, it's a real fact check of a fake fact check by AFP. Um, we're going to get to that in a moment. I'm actually going to break it up into two parts. First, there's the story by AFP, Agence France Press. It concerns the release of our book, Climate at a Glance for Teachers and Students. So here's the story. And I love the headline, Infecting Minds, U.S. Books Sent to Teachers to Sow Climate Doubt. It says, from crops to corals, a book circulated by a controversial U.S. think tank is riddled with misleading claims about established climate science in which campaigners slam as a bid to, quote, infect young minds. Let me just remind you here as we go through this story, the number one tactic of, of somebody on the left is to project what they are doing onto their ideological opposites. The Free Market Heartland Institute drew outrage from campaigners and educators, but applause from climate skeptics who sent the book to more than 8,000 American school teachers this year to present facts, it said, were ignored or distorted by pundits and the media. Climate at a glance for teachers and students, fact-checked, haha, <laughs> sure. Fact-checked by AFP follows another mass book mailing in 2017 and reflects a push to sow skepticism about scientific evidence for the human-driven crisis threatening the planet. All right, I'll stop right here. There is no human-driven crisis threatening the planet. That is insane. That is fear-mongering. It is propaganda, and it has been being pushed by the mainstream media for decades. And that is why shows like our Climate Change Roundtable every Friday and websites that we have like uh, Climate Realism are so important. So Susan Joy Hessel, director of the nonprofit group Climate Communication, told AFP, quote, it is outrageous that such propaganda was sent out with the goal of infecting the minds of children. Good grief. Again, projection. AFP continues, the glossy 80 page book appears like a legitimate reference. Mm, that's because it is complete with data sets, which we have graphs and footnotes citing mainstream sources, including government and international agencies. But scientists told AFP it is packed with misleading claims, including sections to it that imply higher carbon dioxide levels and warming are positive for crops, they are, and coral reefs, and decrease in snow has been negligible, sea level rise is not accelerating, and heat waves have become less severe. Well, yes, that's, that's exactly right. We actually present that in Climate at a Glance. Uh, you can get that at climateataglance.com. You can get it on amazon.com. Or if you like and subscribe to this channel, maybe we'll send you one for free. So uh, the book's publication, the story continues, follows a surge in climate denialism in the United States since July 2022, when Joe Biden secured support for a major climate spending bill. Look, guys, climate realism has been around for a long time. The Heartland Institute's first international Conf conference on climate change was in 2009. This did not just happen because Joe Biden was president and he has a major climate spending bill, which he called the Inflation Reduction Act, which doesn't do anything about inflation but it is a big major climate spending bill. So it continues. Biden is pushing Americans to embrace electric cars and renewable energy, prompting scorn among skeptics who see it as a threat to their lifestyle and values, even as research shows that many citizens recognize climate change is happening. Okay, we gotta stop here again. We don't have enough materials to make the batteries for electric cars. Uh, renewable energy is unreliable and expensive. So yeah, people are skeptical that we can replace our entire energy system and our transportation system with unproven expensive technologies. Call me a skeptic on that. And yes, even we uh, climate realists, even those who come on and are part of the show, Climate Change Roundtable, um, believe climate change is happening. The key question, and they always skip this, is how much of an effect does human activity have on that climate change? And we show again and again that the science shows that human activity is marginal, minimal, impact on it and that overturning our entire society with the idea that we can stop climate change is absurd. We cannot do it. Humans cannot do it. We'll continue. The think tank's opaque funding has long prompted suspicion among campaigners that it is working in the interest of the fossil fuel industry. The Heartland Institute, founded in 1984, does not disclose its major backers, but said that once in 2012, it received funding for research from the charity arm of the fossil fuel behemoth Coke Industries. Okay, stop. I'm gonna, we're gonna we're gonna take this down one by one. But first, I'm gonna scroll back up. Who was that first person they quoted? Who was that? They were from something called. There it is. Uh, Susan Joy Hassall, director of the nonprofit group Climate Communication. Uh, did AFP have any curiosity about who funds that nonprofit group Climate Communication? 
Of course not. They never explore where those organizations get their money. And as for the Heartland Institute, uh, yes, we had documents stolen by climate activist named Peter Glick, who uh, uh, it said in some of those documents that the Koch Foundation had donated to the Heartland Institute one time in 15 years, $25,000 to help publish our healthcare news. That's it. Our funding is so small compared to those on the alarmist side, it's not even funny. But yeah, we don't disclose our, our major donors or even our smaller donors because they will be attacked by the left. And so we, we do not allow that to happen. Kate Sell, Senior Climate Campaign Manager at the Union of Concerned Scientists, another nonprofit. Let's see where they get their money. Ah, forget it. Nobody cares, right? Quote, I would bet it's strategically distributed in certain congressional districts of states where they're trying to provide cover for certain politicians to continue to deny, deceive, or delay on climate change. Well, we did, uh, with only 8,000 to send out, caught me on that one, I guess. We tried to uh, send it to as many people who we thought geographically would be receptive to the message instead of throwing it away. So, you know, we're trying to do right by our donors who helped us with this project. So we wanted to get it to the places where we thought it would do the most good. As of March, however, the latest book had received overwhelmingly positive ratings on Amazon. Quote, all grandparents, buy one for your grandkids. All teachers, get one for your students. The sky is not falling. Get the message out, wrote one reader. Thank you to that reader. AFP cannot confirm if the reviewers are independent of the Institute. Guys, if we could, buy, if we could review bomb our own books, we would have definitely done it. Uh, we can't, and we didn't. And we're just grateful for all the people that did buy the book on Amazon before we did the mailing that they left such nice, positive reviews. Now we're going to go to the AFP fact check quote unquote, fact check. The story is titled Books Sent to Schools Contains Misleading Climate Change Claims. We're just going to go right to the uh, right to some of these fact checks, because what you're going to see is that these are not actually fact checks. The facts we presented are countered with the opinions of other scientists, of alarmist scientists. OK, so we have a, a chapter on crops. We have uh, obviously it says 30 climate facts. So we have 30 different sections and the one on crops. And it says, quote, as the climate modestly warms, global crop yields have set new records almost every year. That is due in part to longer growing seasons and greater concentrations of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, unquote. All right. So here's the quote unquote fact check by AFP. Warmer temperatures and CO2 play a part in boosting crop yields. But scientists say global warming also poses a threat to crops. OK, so the main point we make in crops is that um, one. Uh, global crop yields have set new records and that carbon dioxide concentrations, higher carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere help crops. They do not dispute that. All they say is that, uh, you know, warming poses a threat. Well, in what way? Um, actually, warming leads to longer growing seasons, which is not bad for crops. That would be definitionally good for crops. So the point of the crops section in climate at a glance is to show that chart, which I'm gonna have on the screen right now, showing global crop yields are increasing. So that is not a fact check. That is a an opinion and actually BS. So it's not a fact check at all. We're gonna move on to, let's see, let's try, let's try this one on coral reefs. In climate at a glance, we have quote, corals thrive in warm water, not cold water, and recent warming has allowed corals to expand their range. The, the primary causes of coral bleaching are not global warming, but sediment and agricultural chemical runoffs. Okay, so you would expect to see a pretty vigorous fact check on this one, right? Because people really care about coral reefs. Coral's migration is documented and hailed as a sign of hope, but scientists warn of limits. Okay, so there you go. We state in the book that the migration of coral colonies is increasing. And it's admitted in the so-called fact check that that is, in, in fact, actually happening. And then it wraps up by saying the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency lists sedimentation as, quote, a primary stressor of corals. Primary meaning the number one stressor of corals. Also citing other local threats, such as chemical runoffs. So what do we say in climate at a glance? That global warming is not threatening coral reefs. In fact, a warming ocean, slightly warming ocean, will, will actually increase how much coral is out there, and that the number one enemy of coral is not global warming, but um, chemical runoffs, agricultural runoffs, et cetera. So that's the supposed fact check, reinforcing the point we make 
because it's truthful and it's fact-based that we make in climate at a glance. We're going to take one more. And this one of my favorites is hurricanes. It says, quote, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has found no increase in the frequency or severity of hurricanes despite modest warming. AFP's fact check begins thus. As AFP has reported, the number of hurricane landfalls has not significantly risen in the United States. Thank you, AFP. That's what we said. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, but they're still going to try to get one in here. Let's let's see. However, the global proportion of tropical cyclones reaching very intense category four and five levels is projected to increase due to human caused warming this century, according to NOAA. This is my favorite, quote unquote, fact check of them all, because all it actually does is ratify exactly what we have in climate at a glance when it comes to hurricanes, because the facts cannot be disputed. We just ended the longest stretch of time without a major hurricane hitting the United States. That's what's in the book. That's what AFP just, just uh, ratified right there. Yet they continue, a warmer climate intensifies the effects of hurricanes by raising the risk of storm surges due to rising sea levels and of extreme rainfall since a warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture. But we haven't seen that. In fact, we've had warming for the last 150 years and hurricanes are not getting more intense. This is the one lie they will not give up. Maybe it's because Al Gore put it on the cover of his uh, or his movie poster for an inconvenient truth. But we have the facts on our side on hurricanes and all these other issues. That'll be it for now. If you want to hear more about this, we are going to talk about this very topic. We are going to be fact checking the fact checkers on our Climate Change Roundtable show that is at noon central time on Friday. That's 1 p.m. Eastern right here on this channel. Please like and subscribe this video. And if you subscribe to this channel, you get a notice every time we have a new program. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.